Hey YouTube, Untamed here. So at this point, I have owned the Land Cruiser Heritage Edition here for about a week and a half, two weeks. And at this point, I feel as though I can give you guys an honest and fair comparison video between it and the Tundra TRD Pro that I traded in uh, for it. So with that in mind, I will obviously have some level of bias. I mean, I think we need to kind of address that up front just because, well, I traded in the Tundra for this, right? So I'm going to try my best to to try to keep my bias out of it. Um, and then of course, give you guys the honest picture of, you know, the perks and benefits of each of the, each of the two vehicles, okay? Um, so starting off, uh, kind of diving into it, I'll, I'll end up highlighting the driving characteristics, the differences between them, the notable stat differences, uh, the exterior and interior differences. And in the middle of this video somewhere, I will sprinkle in a giveaway and we'll talk more about that, okay? So kicking off, we'll we'll start off with the the overall driving characteristics and notable stat differences. So, for starters, why is this a Heritage Edition? That is because it is celebrating 60 years of the Land Cruiser at large. So pretty cool there. Definitely quite the lineage. Uh, something you don't necessarily get with that Tundra, uh, but at the same time, you know the Tundra in in and of itself has had a you know, a few generations that have been. Uh, amazing right from the start so they've had a great reputation right from the beginning as well right all right so made in japan versus the u.s so as all of you guys know the tundra is manufactured out of san antonio texas and this is made entirely out of japan so i would argue that there there are definitely perks to each of them i personally am a proud american so i think there's goodness uh, of course to have uh, having that Tundra built out of out of Texas there, offering jobs to Americans. So I think there's a lot of goodness there, and I can take pride in that. However, I can also take pride in the fact that this is b built solely out of Japan. As a lot of us know, there, I would argue that Japan builds the most durable and most refined vehicles. Uh, so I think there's goodness out of both of those. Next up, let's talk transmission. A lot of you guys know this already, but this has an eight speed and the uh, the Tundra had a six speed in it. There are definitely perks to each of them. Uh, the eight speed, I would argue is just smoother. You know, definitely you know, getting up to speed, it shifts like butter and it is so seamless as you're driving and getting on the throttle. The, the Tundra, I would argue to some degree that that six speed is better when it comes to towing. You know, it does offer a little bit better of a towing rating, a 9,000 pound towing with the Tundra and this is 8,100 pounds. Uh, so, and that's not entirely to do with that transmission, right? But it has to do with a little bit like the suspension work, uh, suspension setup. Uh, so a couple factors involved there. But that is the difference between the two, a notable difference. They both have that glorious, that same glorious 5.7 liter V8, uh, making 381 horsepower and 401 foot-pounds of torque. So they both have that same power plant, and that is definitely a perk. And you guys know, uh, as these are notorious for running upwards of 500,000 miles, some making it up to that 1 million mark, right? So that is definitely a huge perk of both these vehicles. So that in and of itself, I think if you're a huge Tundra fan, you know, that's reason enough to be a huge Land Cruiser fan, I think. But uh, neither here or there, I suppose. So because of that same 5.7 liter V8, they both share that glorious... 13 to 15 miles per gallon which you know it's a cross we bear with this vehicle however obvious the obvious perk of that is you know sure we have to pay at the pump but at the same time we don't have to worry about taking it to get you know repairs done uh, on a frequent basis so they require minimal maintenance over their entire lives but it does come at that gas expense right i'd say it's worth it Alrighty, um, let's talk exhaust sound. So I think that is honestly probably the biggest thing that I miss from the Tundra. And I know it's a little bit superficial for me to even say that, but yeah, I do love, I, I did love that the deep rumble that the TRD catback exhaust, dual catback exhaust offered on that Tundra that I had. It was pretty glorious. I'm gonna show you what I have on this. <laughs> it is definitely underwhelming. Uh, you yeah, know, it's definitely, there really is no sound to it. It's pretty, uh, uh, hopefully you guys can see a little bit there. But with that said, this one here, there is something about it. I have never seen a stock exhaust setup look so just robust and beefy and durable looking, right? So obviously it being a Land Cruiser, there is a level of goodness 
to what this stock exhaust setup is uh, as it just appears to be pretty beefy looking. So I think there's goodness there, but I do miss the sound. So I'd be, I'd be lying to say if I said I did not miss that. Uh, the biggest and most obvious thing uh, between the two of them is, well, here's the lineup, right? Got four SUVs, one of, of which I'm selling right there, right? But four SUVs and a Shelby in the garage. What am I missing now? I'm missing a bed. So that is the most obvious difference, of course, uh, between them all is <laughs> I no longer have that that capability of throwing like you know dirty dirty lawn equipment into the back of it. Some some shovels, whatever, lawn fertilizer. I can do that, of course, in here, but it's just less ideal, obviously, because that is the interior space. So that is definitely worth mentioning, of course. So I already talked through the differences in towing capability, 8,100 pounds in the Land Cruiser, the 9,000 pounds in the, in the Tundra. So a big difference that I don't think anybody really talks too much about is the, the four-wheel drive setup. So this is a, a full-time active 4x4 uh, all-wheel drive, if it were 4x4 uh, capability, right? Whereas the the Tundra was a, a manual shift to four-wheel drive. That is noticeable when it comes to the, the handling and overall steering feel. So because this is a full-time active 4x4, it's just a little bit heavier in the steering is what I've noticed. So nothing nothing too bad, nothing, uh, I don't know. It's not. I don't think it's a pitfall but it is definitely worth mentioning. It's something that you will notice if you go from a Tundra to this. All right, let's talk exterior, okay? So the thing that made my Tundra special, of course, was the, the fact that it was army green, and that was the exclusive color for 2020. And obviously, Exhibit A, we love that color. My wife and I, we love that color. Uh, however, there is something to be said about this, and I have never been a fan of black cars, just because I, I do admittedly have a level of OCD that just gets to me, but hopefully you can kind of see it there. But the metallic in this midnight black metallic is beautiful. It is, you got a number of blue and silver flakes throughout it, and I know it's probably not coming up too well for you guys, but it really is, it really is super nice. So, and from right here, of course, you can't tell, you can't notice it. But when you're up close and the sun's hitting it right and it's clean, right now it's super dusty and dirty, uh, it does look really, really nice. So, but I would argue the army green is better uh, between the two of them. But this does have, of course, the heritage edition special bits like the bronze wheels. I think those are amazing and they look a lot better with the BFG Goodrich KO2s wrapped around it. Um, seemed like 50-50, half of you, Half of you really liked the white lettering outward, and the other the rest of you were were not about it. So, what do you guys think? I think uh, I personally am still pretty happy with that decision. So, so you got exterior wheels there, um, the bronze wheels, minimal orange peel. So that is something to note, and I don't know why or how that is the difference, but and the Tundra itself, it had a lot more orange peel in the paint. And if you guys aren't familiar with what I'm talking about, just just Google orange peel. Uh, so it's just kind of that, I don't really have a good way to show you an example with the truck being dirty, but um, bottom line is the overall paint quality and finish on this Land Cruiser is definitely superior to the Tundra. And for the folks who own a Land Cruiser, you can definitely attest to that uh, if you've seen them. So they come out of the factory looking near flawless. So that's pretty cool. Um, we talked about the refinement. Just the overall feel of the Land Cruiser, just, you know, it feels like you're in a premium SUV, a luxury SUV, for sure. Let's talk weight. So, if I recall correctly, the, the Tundra has a starting weight of right around 5,200 pounds. Don't quote me exactly, but I think, I think that's right where, where it kind of laid, or where it landed. Um, whereas this, it has a starting weight of 5,800 pounds, which is pretty, uh, <laughs> <laughs> pretty ridiculous, right? I mean, this is SUV and the Tundra is much longer. It's just a, it's a truck, which you would assume would weigh more. But I think that is a testament to the overall durability and longevity that goes into the building and the research and development of this vehicle here. So 
I'll try my best to, at some point in this video, kind of crawl underneath and show you the underside of this Land Cruiser. But just all of the parts and components under there are just so much bigger and heftier and just more, just a lot more, a lot more, a lot more, uh, I don't know, you can just tell that they are a lot more robust and built to last. And I'll try my best to show that to you. It may not come out too well in the video, but I'll show that to you. I remember seeing a video, I think it might've been next to a, a Highlander. I'm pretty sure it was a Toyota Highlander and a uh, Land Cruiser. It showed a side-by-side -side underneath portrayal of, uh, of both of the vehicles. And this just looked, <laughs> it looked like a monster by comparison. And the other one just looked pretty, uh, pretty chintzy by comparison, right? So definitely something of note when it comes to that weight uh, that it comes in at. Um, What's next? So these are, and, and a large part of that, it came from the, the lead technician of Toyota of the Land Cruiser here, uh, saying that they build these to last 25 years. So like they go into it with that mindset of, hey, this needs to last 25 years with minimal issue. So that's kind of like their, their true north when they're manufacturing this vehicle. So I think that's pretty cool. And you definitely cannot say that with a lot of vehicles on the road today, right? So um, next thing here I'll talk about is the level of flash so this is going to be hit or miss i mean a lot of people there's a reason why escalades sell so well because they're, they're beautiful they're glorious they're super flashy right whereas this it's just a, it's just a you know kind of a, a glorified highlander to a lot of people it's not the most flashy vehicle in the world but personally i like that i think that's a good thing uh you know especially it depends on the, the line of work that you guys do uh, you try not to be the, the super flashy guy showing up in the, the brand new Porsche Cayenne or whatever. You don't want to be that guy. And I personally love that about this uh, Land Cruiser. So that's, that's going to be a hit or miss with most of you guys because I think a lot of people want to be able to show that they spent a lot of money, right? Whereas if you don't, to the untrained eye, this is just a simple Toyota SUV. That's not too special, right? But I like that. So... Let's move on to the interior. Let's start with the cargo space, okay? So I got the button there. It opens slowly. I think there might be a way to actually make that a little quicker or make it manual. I personally love that tailgate feature. I took the family into town the other day and we watched a car show where they're all driving downtown and we all just sat and we pulled off on the side of the road, of course, and we all sat right here and had some, uh, some buffalo wings. And we're just watching the cars drive by and it was pretty cool with this tailgate feature-ish. Of course, you get that with the Tundra, I get it. I'm gonna show you this. So be, I better be careful with what I say here. <laughs> so this is uh, obviously the wife's uh, forerunner, Filled with all of her mom stuff. But it's pretty full back here, right? Filled to the brim to some degree. And the height is something to mention too. So can I take your best gauge at that? I know you can only see so much for from a video, but and then the height of this is ridiculous. It is so tall, which is awesome. And of course, wider too. So Definitely a lot more cargo space back here uh, compared to even the Forerunner. So I gotta be careful because then my wife will end up taking this over, I suppose. But uh, definitely a huge perk. So oftentimes the Land Cruiser will normally come with the, the third row seats, but with the Heritage Edition, it does not, of course. So uh, some people are for that, some people are against it. What else? So back, back seat space. Let's talk through that real quick. So the Tundra was definitely superior when it came. That's when you know you're about that dad life. Soccer balls come flying out when you open up. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to get where the best lighting for you. So this is me at full comfort back, right? I'm touching about, you know, where my, my son's car seat is at. My daughter, still, you know, plenty of room. This is bigger. Can I show you there? It is bigger than the Forerunner. The Tundra, though, was next level. All right, so I will never have anything with a bigger seat back seat than that. So that was superior for sure. Denver, look out, buddy. Look out. Okay. But the visibility is better in this, I would argue. These windows 
are just huge. No huge uh, C pillar, D pillar back here, blocking your visibility, and a huge rear window. And uh, just seeing over the front hood is glorious, I think. It is awesome. And you know, whereas the Tundra did have the, you know, the fake hood scoops, it did, it did block your visibility a little bit, but it wasn't bad, okay? But this is definitely superior in that regard, okay? Let's talk, small thing, but I'll mention it because you never really see it in videos. Hopefully you can see it. But the headliner, this headliner is like a, like a felt suede material. You can maybe see a little bit better here. But right here, so this is like dark suede material. Sure, it collects a lot of hair, you can kind of see there, but it looks and feels really nice. And that's one thing that I liked about my Tacoma TRD Pro versus uh, the Forerunner and Tundra. The Forerunner and Tundra had a tan roof liner, so I didn't like that, but I do love this. I think it looks good, it looks sleek, and it matches the vehicle very well. All right, no Apple CarPlay, so that is perhaps the most notable mention when it comes to this interior and the infotainment system at large. Uh, you know, every other 2020 Toyota vehicle has Apple CarPlay, which is concerning that their, their most premium vehicle, quote unquote, does not come with it. So kind of a testament to, to its aging platform, right? But that's not going to be a deal breaker. Obviously it wasn't, but it still is an annoyance to some degree. Um, the controls at large, I'm not going to demonstrate in this video. I'll definitely do it another one for you. Um, but the controls at large within this are a bit more complicated, even working the AC. So you gotta get into the infotainment here, it's on the screen, what you're adjusting it. Of course, you can do the temp down here below, but when you're talking like uh, fan speed and all that stuff, you gotta be using the screen here to kind of adjust through that. So whereas with the Tundra, you guys recall, similar to the Forerunner, you got these giant knobs down here, almost look like toys, right? But there's goodness to that for sure. So that is a difference worth mentioning. Um, we'll kind of wrap up the video there, kind of teetering a little long, but actually let me show you this because I forgot to show you this last time. Hopefully, hopefully you can see it to some degree. I don't know, lighting's not going to be ideal for you. So, bottom line is, it is a lot more robust underneath by comparison. And I think they even said that the frame on the Land Cruiser here is 25% stronger than the, uh, than the Tundra is. So, definitely worth mentioning. So, my final note to you guys is this. So, I'd like to pass these out to you guys, but I don't want to just kind of give it to everybody who's willy-nilly posting, hey, I want it on my comment section because that would probably be 100 people in 10 seconds. As, as you see, I do not have 100 things to give away. So if you would like to receive any one of these items, these are the uh, cup holder inserts. Ma. Got three of them. They'll all go to one person. I have, Ma. I have, this here is the four-wheel drive engagement shift as well as the push to start surround it dechromes it if you will within the tundra so i got that i have a green version 2 ajt design key fob for someone and a black ajt design version 2 as well from somebody and then these are the two that i was using previously a black version 2 you know, still perfect condition, of course, and then uh, Army Green version two. So these are all for the Tundra, uh, I believe, actually. These might actually be for maybe the Forerunner as well. I'll double, I'll double check that and put it in my comment section. But if you would like to get these, I would ask that you do a video of you in front of your vehicle, in front of your Tundra, whatever it is, saying, hey, Untamed, uh, just shooting this video here. Uh, appreciate if you sent me one of, one of your, your key fobs or whatever you're after. Just let me know, but do a shout out, of course, and then comment in my comment section below saying, hey, I posted a video, check out my page. And then I will do it in the order in which they come in. So it will only last for so long, of course. All right, guys. I want to say bye to the buggy? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching as always. Until next time.